Hello and welcome to the Matt's Reloading Bench. Today I'm going to be loading up some hunting ammo. So for all you hunters out there that have a lower budget and don't have any uh, specialty reloading equipment, you've got the bare bones basics, this video is going to be for you. I've got once fired factory Hornady brass from some precision hunter ammo that I've used in the past and I'm going to be loading up the Hornady ELDX 143 grain bullets using Superformance powder and the Federal Large Rifle Match Primers. This is basically going to end up being the same thing as the Precision Hunter, just my own recipe using Superformance. Um, <clears throat> so as far as the brass goes, I'm not going to be doing any machining to it whatsoever. I'm going to run it through the resizing die and I'm going to trim it to length and that's going to be it. All right, so stick around and let's see what kind of results I can get. So first things first, I need to lube all my brass. And to do that, I'm using Hornady's One Shot Case Lube. Got to give it a good shake and then spray on the lube. down my bench right away got to get that excess off and now I can go ahead and deprime and resize all right one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure what my shoulder is before I resize it and I've got 2.601 See what I have after. Two point six zero. Then I want to see what I have for next size. I've got point two nine five. And after it brings it down to 0.288. Then how thick is my brass? 13 thousandths. 0.288 minus 26 thousandths. 262. So that's giving me about two thousandths of neck tension. which isn't terrible. I would like to see three, but this is what I've got. So I'm going to go ahead and resize all this brass and then I will set up my trimmer and we'll go from there. All right, now that everything is resized, I need to trim all the brass to length. The Hornady manual suggests the trim to length is 1.91 inches and right now I've got 1.92. So I'm going to set up my trimmer, see what it's at right now. One point nine one nine. So I'm going to move that nine thousandths in, try it again. See where we're at. One point nine one one. Bring it down one more. One 
1.910. So that is what I want it set at. After I'm done trimming all these to length, I'm going to go ahead and deburr the case next, okay? Because the trimmer does put a pretty gnarly uh, burr on the inside and out. And you want to make sure that that is gone before you start uh, any bullet seating. Now I'm going to go ahead and deburr the case mouths. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean all my brass. I have 10 pieces of brass primed up with Federal GM210 match primers and I am going to be loading it with one tenth of a grain increment charges starting at 43.7 and working up to 44.6 grains. For seating depth I'm going to go off of what it has in the Hornady reloading manual which is 2.80 inches from base to tip. I've got my 10 shots all loaded up, so next step we'll go to the range and run them through the chronograph and see what I get for muzzle velocities. I've completed the 10 shot ladder test and got the data off of my lab radar. I can see that between 44.3 and 44.6 grains, I've only got an 11 foot per second difference for muzzle velocity between the four shots. So I think I'm going to load up five shot groups at 44.3, 44.4, 44.5, and 44.6 grains of powder. Now, with that being said, before we go that far, one thing that we're going to want to do is inspect our brass. And I labeled each piece of brass with the charge so that I know what I'm looking at when I'm analyzing my brass. What I'm looking for is pressure signs. I want to see if there's any indentations, any um, deformities in the brass, any split necks, anything like that, um, mushrooming on the primer itself. And even at the highest, which was 44.6 grains, I do not see any of that whatsoever. So. I would say that the brass is safe. It's a good safe charge as far as pressure outputs and uh, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not too worried about um, ruining my brass over time. It looks like it's going to be very, very sustainable. This five shot group is going to be at 44.3 grains of powder. At 44.3 grains of powder, I had a group size of 1.46 MOA with a mean radius of 0.47 MOA. The average muzzle velocity was 2685 with an extreme spread of 3991 and a standard deviation of 1587. This five shot group is going to be at 44.4 grains of powder. At 44.4 grains of powder, I had a group size of 1.34 MOA with a mean radius of 0.51 MOA. The average muzzle velocity was 26.97 with an extreme spread of 40.87 and a standard deviation of 15.89. This five shot group is going to be at 44.5 grains of powder. Yeah. 
I have 44.5 grains of powder. I had a group size of 0.79 MOA with a mean radius of 0.3 MOA. The average muzzle velocity was 2701 with an extreme spread of 27.96 and a standard deviation of 11.31. This five shot group is going to be with 44.6 grains of powder. At 44.6 grains of powder, I've got a group size of 0.71 MOA with a mean radius of 0.31 MOA. The average muzzle velocity is 2713 with an extreme spread of 24.91 and a standard deviation of 10.16. Now that I've got my five shot groups completed, I'll take the target home analyze it, see what I have for group sizes and compare it to the lab radar and uh, we'll make an informed choice of what we're going to go with. Stay tuned. Now that I've had time to look everything over, I would say I'm definitely going to go with 44.6 grains of Superformance powder with this bullet. Um, with a group size of 0.71 MOA and a mean radius of 0.31, I am very happy with that as well as should anybody who is out deer hunting that would take a shot, I'd say out to 400 yards, you can definitely feel confident and comfortable using that particular recipe. If you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, let me know by giving me that thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you can stay up to date with new videos that I'll have coming out. Until next time, shoot straight and be safe.